Hi everyone. I'm going to use my fall football banner to do some techniques to help you in any of your kits. These are just some general painting tips and different styles that you can use while you're working. One of the easiest things that you can do with your pieces is using a baby wipe and we call it our little faux stain method. I just got a little bit of paint and I am just putting it on, pretending like it is a stain. The moisture in the baby wipe helps to uh, even it out. And the other advantages is it dries super quickly. So that is something that you could do as one of your finishes. This works great for very large pieces, like your backgrounds of circles, door hangers, um, other large pieces of your 3D. You can use it with small sections, just takes a little bit of patience if you don't wanna get any on the edges. And speaking of edges, if you do have paint on your edges, simply use a baby wipe or a wet paper towel and you can clean those up. So that's one method, using a baby wipe. If you wanted to, you could use one of our sponge daubers and simply paint your pieces. You do see a little bit of texture as you're working with this method. It's going to flatten out quite a bit, so don't get scared about that. Um, don't soak it with paint. Um, I'm getting a nice coverage, but I'm not, um, it's not, it doesn't have puddles on there. I usually just hold it with my fingernail. You could hold it with a toothpick, a safety pin, a pencil, um, something small like that to um, keep it in place. If you're doing tiny pieces, you could um, use some painter's tape and put it in like a paint, like a tape bubble down on your table or tape down the ends and put all your little tiny pieces affixed to that strip of tape. That will help you with especially things like little letters. Okay, so that is another way of doing that. Definitely different. You see the wood grain with the baby wipe method, more solid. And like I said, the texture will sort of flatten out as it dries. And then you also, if you have in your toolbox, a paint roller, you definitely could grab yourself some paint and roll it on there. That will definitely give you a flatter um, finish to your piece. It's a little bit more um, transparent. You see the wood grain through. This is difficult with small pieces, so you definitely wanna use this with things that are like the size of your hand or larger. Um, it would be too difficult to roll smaller pieces because you are gonna get it on the edges when you do the paint rollers. Um, you can, uh, again, like I said, wipe off those edges. So you sort of get three different looks with those different tools. Um, the other thing you can do, I guess I should have mentioned, is that if you're using a sponge and um, it's a big habit for most people to paint back and forth because they're used to using a paintbrush. So if you would use your sponge back and forth, you definitely could do that, but you risk a lot more paint on your edges, so you're going to want to wipe those. Um, if I do a large piece with a sponge like this, I always try and go out and off so that it um, doesn't get on my edge any more than necessary. Um, so that is definitely something that you could do. Let me just flip this over real quick and I'll show you what I mean. You can take that paint and just back and forth with your sponge, but kind of go off the edges. So that's something that um, you can do, especially on small pieces though, I always go up and down. So you can, you know, you've got different methods there, whether it be the paint roller, a sponge, or the baby wipe method. I rarely use a paintbrush with any of my work um, I, because it just gets down on the edges. So I'm gonna set these out of the way. I have my little pieces for my football here. And um, as I mentioned before, 
you can use a tape, a piece of tape, like I have some fall letters here. They're just stuck to the painter's tape and I can put the ends down and um, just stick it to the table like so. I'm just gonna reuse this piece of tape here, put my little pieces. This works great with small letters. They're not completely stuck to the table, but they are um, down there a little better. I usually just kind of hold on to the tape. You don't want your, your uh, sponge dripping, so I usually dab off some so that it's not dripping. And it's just a very gentle up and down motion. I say over and over and over again about the whole up and down motion. You want to have clean edges on these little pieces. You would be days trying to paint the edges. The only way to do that is really to spray paint them. Um, if you want your project to turn out um, very clean looking, then you want to do this gentle up and down motion. I'll pick one of these up here so you can see it. You have to go over it maybe once or twice just to um, get it full coverage. There you can see, I've got nice clean edges because I did that up and down motion. White is especially difficult because it shows up so much. So you don't want to push hard because when you push hard, it's gonna squeeze down over the edges. Like I'll show you one and then I'll fix it. So if I push hard and I'm just not paying attention, see how it goes down over the edge? And when that happens, I can take my baby wipe and clean it up. Okay, so you want to go in that up and down motion for all of your, whoops, that's my brown one, with all of your um, little pieces, okay? All right, let me move those guys out of the way. So once you have your um, pieces done, I'm going to bring back over here um, this guy. There's some things that you can do to um, kind of give some character to your pieces. You can take, of course, whatever color. I'm gonna use white just so it shows up on the camera. You can take one of your sponges, and this is pretty dry, there's not much paint left on there, and kind of at, a, um, at an angle, just sort of drag it along there. That just gives you a little bit of some highlighting, so that is an option of something that you can do on your pieces. You can also do some uh, flecking. I do a lot of flecking with an old toothbrush um, a little wee bit of water on your toothbrush, get a little bit of paint, and you're literally just gonna pull back with your finger and release some of that paint. See that? I'm just pulling back, let me see if I can do it sideways here. I'm just pulling back on that toothbrush, okay? So that flecking gives a lot of character. Let me pull into the camera um, another piece here. You can kind of see, this is a Halloween piece that I just did. I added some purple flecking just to give it a little bit of character, okay? So that is an option. Something else that you can do is add some dots. Um, I rarely paint with a paintbrush. Often I'm using the wrong end of a paintbrush got myself a puddle of paint. I dip that end in there and just simply dot, dot, dot. That gives some character to your pieces as well. So um, I will post some finished pictures after um, the video and I'll post them on our website right below this video so you can kind of see some close-ups of that. So we've got edging, flecking, dots, um, those are all fun things that you can do. I'm also gonna show you some options. Um, this banner has leaves, and so I'm gonna grab some leaves here. Um, when you're doing some things, fall is the perfect time for this. 
sometimes you want to do different shades. I'm going to start with my yellow because it is my lighter, brighter color. I'm going to dab on some yellow to this leaf. And again, I'm not, it's not dripping with paint. It is not super, um, super uh, soaked with paint and it's not even 100% covering there, and that's okay, I don't mind that. Um, so I've got that on there. And then often when I am doing things like this, I use my same sponge, I don't even switch with the next color. So I'm gonna grab a little orange here and I'm just randomly adding on some orange. A lot of times I sort of twist my sponge stick a little bit as I go, because I don't want that circle shape. I don't want that on my piece. So there, I think that's good. I'm not gonna add any more to that. Um, I can do the same thing with um, other colors. Let me get some orange on here and I'm gonna grab some red same thing add in that red and when you don't do it fully it almost gives you that little veining um, for this particular piece it kind of really gives you that fall look I can again do that whole flecking method. My paintbrush is, or I'm sorry, my toothbrush is a little wet. Grab a little yellow paint, fleck it on there. Just something extra added to your piece to give it that really artistic look. So that is kind of a real fun thing that you can do. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention while I had you in this little general video is your gluing. We usually put super glue in your kits. Uh, occasionally it's a different glue, it kind of depends on the kit or depends on stock that's out there. Um, be careful with those little tubes. Um, in the shop during class, we use the Loctite, um, a lot more expensive but easy to control. Um, this also works well. This is just your craft glue from Dollar Tree. White Elmer's glue, perfectly fine. Um, and when we do our gluing, we make sure to, let me see here, let me grab a, a piece. We make sure that we're only doing like dot, dot, couple, ooh, I don't know if that's showing up in camera, very little tiny bit. Can you see that in the camera? I don't have a ton of glue on there. That's all I need. It will stick really well, and I don't want it oozing out. If you're using the craft glue or Elmer's glue, it's gonna take longer to dry. You just wanna let it set until it is dry. All right, so just to recap, you've got options such as using a baby wipe, of course, using your dauber up and down, um, using a roller or your dauber side to side, you can add things like your little speckle, your dots, your highlighting along the edges. You can mix colors and have a lot of fun with it. So those are just some general painting tips. If you have a different kit than this, there are pictures posted. And as always, you can ask us questions and we'll help you through it. Enjoy the painting process. Thank you.